Hey. Okay. I don't know what we're talking about. What yeah, are what are we talking about? We don't even know. Um, okay, so today we want to talk about um, part three of our dating series. Um, so, <laughs> dating. <laughs> dating. It's hard to, you know, it's funny because we talk a lot about dating. I don't do a lot of dating, to be honest. Yeah. But you've been doing some dating, have you not? Um, ish. Ish, yeah. Oh, I have one question, though, because you were just wanting to talk about crushes. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. did you have some crushes? Well, I think we talked about, like, two podcasts ago about developing crushes and how easy it is to, like, how crushes develop is kind of interesting, and no one is immune to this, right? Like, this is, like, a totally human situation and um, it, crushes are kind of linked to fantasy a little bit because usually when you're developing a crush on someone it's someone you probably don't know super well maybe you do maybe you don't but there's always like a little bit of fantasy element to it would you agree oh yeah so mostly fantasy that's right <laughs> So you're like, oh my god! Like this person likes traveling. I like traveling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, maybe like, you like kittens too. <laughs> maybe we'll go on a trip together. Um, you know, you, it's just crazy. So I, um, I know sometimes it seems like I'm really ice cold, but I do have a lot of emotions, and I, I easily fall in love with people. I, I could fall in love with anyone, and I also develop crushes. I try my best not to because I find them also extremely distracting. Right. Um, so I did develop two crushes recently, um, <laughs> one after the other. They weren't both at the same time. The first one um, I had developed mostly because um, I had made out with this guy. And it was just like so over the top sensual that I kind of got that mixed up in my head um, and I had developed a crush, yeah. right? And all of a sudden I wanted to be his girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think that's super common. Um, and like what do you mean by sensual? I think a lot of guys out there want to know what women see as sensual. Right. Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I am extremely sensual in general when it comes to um, sex like that. That's the number one feedback I get. Um, intense. Who Guys say I'm intense and then I'm extremely sensual and it almost takes them aback. So um, <laughs> sensual, um, just like, I don't know, like very... Um, just being able to be really, really super close with someone and really be open with someone in a physical way. Okay, I but think. be more specific. Like, like in the making out part or Yeah, like what's a sensual makeout? Like <laughs> like are you you're looking into each other's eyes, like I uh, deep French kissing, D F K. Nice. Okay. Um, that makes more sense. Yeah. So like very like fourteen years old. Yes, exactly. So um you developed a crush because you experienced this uh, DFK, this deep French kissing. <laughs> I get it. I love the DFK. And I, it brought me back because before uh, guys were taking off my clothes and I was like, you know, sucking dick and stuff, um, I would totally um, do the DFK. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, it's one of, actually, I really, it's important to me. I won't even date a guy if he doesn't do DFK. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, that's a really good, um, goal to have. <laughs> I've had sex with guys before and I've wanted to even just make out, um, as foreplay. Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, what are you like a high school kid? And I'm like, it's so important for me. Um, that turns me on so much. Like that's like the, my primer. You know totally. what I mean. Um, so I need I need to have that DFK in my life. Anyway, so I had done this crazy DFK with this guy, and I totally crushed on him. Yeah. And, but then, um, oh, and also he had lit some candles. I mean, the no. whole no. <laughs> okay. See, that's where the fantasy starts. It's like he lit candles for me. He obviously is obsessed with me. Yeah, exactly. And wants to marry me. I don't think any guy's ever done that for me before. Yeah. And that's know. like goes back to one of our um, episodes about your MO. You know, guys know what works for them to get laid. And so they do it over and over. It's positive feedback, right? Exactly. Exactly. So it's like if you like something that a guy's doing, then you're more inclined to fuck him. So then the guy's going to use that on other women because... 
that's a good tip. And that's totally fine, but um, it'll get you. Yeah. And retrospectively, I don't think he was doing it for me. No, he's right? probably doing it for himself. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, and then he didn't really like text me after that. Oh, dang. <laughs> So here I am thinking, oh, my God, like, this guy's going to want to go to Hawaii with me next month. <laughs> You're like, I got to give my bikinis ready. <laughs> and, and, you know, that was it. And so that was a really big wake-up call. But that didn't stop me from having crushes because no. – <laughs> You're not immune. You will get a re-crush. I re-crushed. And so then I crushed on a new person. Yeah, and Ray, you haven't even really updated me about this new guy because for a second there you were, like, very into him. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. then the last time we hung out, you did not mention him, and I forgot to ask. Yeah, and so you what know, happened? I think, I guess, like I'm not really sure, and like I think we have a question that we're going to talk about later, and this um, this might apply. It might apply, but I think everyone has really busy lives, and sometimes it's hard to know if someone's like legitimately like just busy. Or they don't, like, because, like, sometimes people don't want to, like, have different levels of communication. Like, for me, I like texting every day. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I, I like to have an open communication, not maybe every At day. At what point would you start texting every day? Because well, that seems a, like a lot to yeah, me. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Maybe not every day. But, like, if you're interested in someone, like, I like to have, like, a, a messages every couple days, like, casual. But have um, you gone on dates yet? Yes. Okay. See, yes. to me, that's the crucial po- part. Yes. Okay, putting that effort, because you still are putting an effort um, to text people and stuff, right? So um, I wouldn't start doing that really intensely until, like, after you've gotten to know each other, like, hung out a couple times. Yeah, and I think, again, this fantasy, like, when someone doesn't text you as much as you would like or doesn't want to hang out with you as much as you like, um, you're always kind of like – oh, is it me, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, is it because they don't like me? But you forget, that's part of the fantasy. You forget that everyone has their own lives. People are busy. They've got work. They've got other things on their mind. I know, but... Maybe they don't communicate as much with you. For me, because I know you, like, you're just... I feel like you're just priming up the excuse board. (laughs) Yeah, I know. And so... Because don't... Yes, everyone's busy, and you can be compassionate to every single thing that is going on in people's lives, but those things are also going on in your life, and you also have this crush that you're willing to put effort into. So no, he didn't like you back. Yeah, he didn't like me back, and so that's exactly where I'm getting. Oh, man. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) And you know, you'll see a billion memes about this out there, and it's absolutely true. Like, if someone wants to hang out with you, they're going to hang out with you. If they want to be with you, they'll, they'll be with you. Yeah, but I think those are they might those might be two separate things. So, because I think about this with my friends, sometimes I cancel on my friends. It does mm-hmm. not change how much I love them. Yes, that's okay? true. Okay, or like them. Mm-hmm. Um, that could have something to do with what's going on in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, that that is true. But this the the other thing is, um, he wasn't into you to the extent that you were into him. He didn't buy into the fantasy the way that you did. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that he didn't like you. Okay. Yeah. So what I said I I think was too harsh. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's just not that into you to that extent. But he was into you because you guys, he did give you his time. Yeah. Um, you know, just like I just went on this date with or I just started dating this guy. We went on two dates. The first date I really liked him and the second date I didn't. Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh it just like he um, it's not that I don't like him as a person. I just re- recognize that he wasn't looking for the same things as I was. Yes, exactly. Okay. So yeah. this perspective is very important because you can get really down on yourself and be like, he just like the way I was like so blunt, like he just didn't like you. I'm sure he really likes you. He probably thinks you're amazing because mm-hmm. you really are. Mm-hmm. But he, he might've recognized that you're looking for something different than he is. Yeah, that's probably true, actually. And, Which you is know, a gift. And I made some, I did some things <gasps> that I said I wouldn't do, too. I'm oh going to just come. <laughs> and I'm going to say, I'm saying this because. What did um, you do? I'm saying this because uh, I want to show that, like, I I preach, like, I'm preaching all the time, but it, it's all so hard for every person to follow your own boundaries sometimes, and it can be really challenging. And, like, Every and I'm gonna also say this as a warning to women. Every time I've sent pictures to guys, it has never benefited me. 
for right. free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Okay, because, like, I have my own content. I sell content, whatever. But any time a guy has – I've been, like, sexting with a guy and I have sent him pictures because he's requested it, it has never gotten me a relationship. It never got me laid. It never got me more love. It never got me anything that I ever wanted. No. Um, and I just really need it to – It just got you horny and unsatisfied. And it's like, it sucks. Well, at least that's what like, it gets me. I know these guys aren't doing it because, like, guys will even be like, All right, you don't have to send me the picture and I'll still send it, right? <laughs> you, and then well, you're probably more inclined to send it that way. You're like, that's oh, right. well, it's on my own volition. That's right. I got this. And it's just like, it just makes me feel, and this is, ex- and I now, I know, I know what, ha- I, I should know this being a content creator. These guys are literally taking these pictures and jerking off to them. And then they aren't horny anymore, and they don't want to hang out with me. Yeah. Like, that is literally what is happening. Yeah. And um, I just got to stop sending <sighs> pictures for free. Like, okay, it's so that just... was mistake number one. Yeah, and, like, it ha- I, how many times do I have to learn this lesson? Like, I'll, literally, that guy will seem so into me. Well, I don't know, Rhea. How many times <laughs> do you need to learn this lesson? <laughs> A guy will be so into me texting, sexting, it'll get to the point, okay, can I send me some pictures? Oh, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, here's some great pictures. And then I won't hear from him. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it just makes me feel really shitty, but it's like also me doing it. So, Mm. Well, there's a lot of aspects involved uh, in this, Rhea. (laughs) (laughs) Um, As an artist... There's part of you as an artist who wants to share the art you make. Exactly. You're very proud of your art. Yeah. And you want, um, as a human being, you want to be appreciated for what you're proud of. Yeah. Um, also, uh, this is what I did. I got into this habit for a really long time. Um, I would do things that I know would push people away. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Because either I just wasn't ready for a relationship, like on a bigger scale, or I subconsciously knew that they weren't right for me um, or I was self-sabotaging because I don't believe in my own, that I love myself yeah, or that I don't believe in my own value. And all of these things can, tri- can, can contribute as well. Mm-hmm. Um, the art that you make is you naked. So it's hard for you to share it with your family, people that would really truly support you. Mm-hmm. So I understand why when you get close to a guy, you all of a sudden want to show them this beautiful stuff. It's like, look at this picture I drew. You know, yeah. like you want to show, and I totally get that. Um, but you need to look at it as a dating perspective, just f- dating, okay? Um, a lot of times when I was in this um, cycle, I would want to share, like, my story with guys. It's like I saw that as the next step to us, like, being coming closer and, like, that that meant that we were, you know, taking a step together because I would share my past and it – for the most part, ended up being too much information for guys, mm-hmm. and it pushed them away. Mm-hmm. So um, you could see your the naked pictures that you're sending in the same way. And, like, yeah, it sucks. You can't just be like, Rosa, look at this dope-ass picture I took. And, like, yeah. aren't you proud of me? Um, because I don't want to see you naked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's exactly what it is. It's like I just want someone to be like, wow, that's a really beautiful picture that you took. <laughs> yeah, and, you, and so you want attention. Yeah. Okay, so you can get that in other ways. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I would recommend doing. And then I get I get disappointed when the guy doesn't want to give me attention anymore. Yeah, I haven't sent a naked picture in so long because I've actually experienced the same thing, um, where I've been like kind of into a guy. We like made out one time in a cab when we were drunk, and then um, eventually we sort of like started admitting like that we want to fuck each other. So then I just like sent him this beautiful video of me soaping up my tits in the shower which I recommend to the people who actually deserve it and like sending these pictures. It's a very good angle in the shower, good lighting too. But uh, we literally never spoke of it again because he was probably just like, sweet, thanks for the material. exactly. exactly. And I was kind of just like, well, now what? Yeah. And I didn't really like that guy. I didn't have a crush on him. Um, But I didn't get anything out of it either. Yeah. And the other thing I want to mention um, when it comes to that kind of thing is that what I found is that um, a lot of guys lately that I've been going on dates with, they want to know what they can get out of me. I can see that as their focus. They're like, what can I get out of her? What does she have to give to me and to offer? And I mean sexually. Mm-hmm. And it's very easy uh, to notice that. 
So when it comes to dating, my recommendation for guys, um, and we've talked about this in the last couple of podcasts, is get to know her personality, her morals, what makes her tick, her passions, because she will notice that you are more interested in that than what color her panties are, for example. Oh, yeah. I notice it. Like I've said this before, the guys that have been have chatted with me and have never – I always remember the ones that don't ask for pictures. I always remember the ones that want to get to know my personality. Um, it's so noticeable because yeah. you're like the 1%. Yeah. So like this is like the tip. That of, should be your MO. Exactly. Yeah. Like what can I do to get to know this woman on a deeper level? Yeah. You know, and it doesn't – you don't have to be – it's not about catching feelings. This is about just human connection and in general. You might, again, you might do all this and you might not have any relationship, but just practicing getting to know people in general, um, that's how you build connections with people. Yeah. Um, and it's very important. And it makes them feel really special. And it's incredibly valuable to your own life. Yeah. Okay. The people, the most, the people who are the most wise, they have a huge variety of human beings in their life. Right. And yeah. um, whether it's diversity of ethnicity. They have a huge amount of people in their lives um, that they connect with, that they can feel compassion for, and that they can understand. And that will help you. One experience will help you with an, another experience that you didn't even expect. Yes, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it goes w- way deeper than just getting into a girl's pussy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it also, I mean, this goes for life in general. Like, this is how we improve as a society is that we start to get to know each other better um, because then we won't be so judgy. We won't, we'll be more open-minded. When you get to learn from other people who've had different experiences than you, mm-hmm. whether it be a different, a, you know, a man, woman, different gender, whatever, that's going to make you a better person overall. Yeah. Um, because you'll have been exposed to that person's story, that person's yeah. experience, whatever. Um, okay. And then <laughs> right before we started recording, Raya said these words, a guy tricked me into having sex with him. Yeah. Do you want to tell that story? Um, what the hell do you mean by that? You can't just throw those words around. Well, I mean, I guess because, like, <laughs> he had tricked me because this was at a point where I was, like, just going off about my boundaries, how I'm done with casual sex. Yes. Um, I Now I want to go on dates. I want to get to know a guy on a deeper level. Um, I'm just not into this, you know, maybe the old me six months ago would be down for a come and dump situation. But in my mind, the new me wasn't here for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and not even <laughs> in your mind. You said it on the podcast. Yeah. And on lives <laughs> and said, in real life. I've said it everywhere. Yeah. Um, and then here's the thing though, like people have people have weak moments, right? <laughs> yeah. And I think everyone can relate to this. It's like sometimes you just like you, you get a text message at a certain time on a certain day when you're feeling a certain kind of way. Yes. And it, you just react totally opposite to how you planned on on it. So um, basically, (laughs) I had vowed to the core of my being, not, I guess not to the core of my being, um, that I was going to have all these boundaries and I wasn't going to do this. And then this guy's like, oh, you know, um, why don't you come up? He just lured, he he seduced me. (laughs) He lured you. He seduced you. That's a better word. He seduced me. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't lure me. But I think he probably seduced you with his past actions, right? And yes. then mix that mixed with your fantasy of him. I had a big fantasy going. Helped you reason the, like, oh, um, I should have sex with him. Yes. Like, yes. Oh, well, he did this. I don't know if it's the same guy. Well, he lit these candles. Yes. So he must really like me. So it's okay if I fuck him. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And yeah. again, you know, this is no different in a way than the picture situation. It's because it's some weird thing where I'm like, okay, well... Um, you know, if I have sex with him, and this is consensual, like I, I literally, I, he didn't, t- you know, this was totally consensual. Yeah. I went over there on my own will. Yeah. <laughs> um, if he, if I have sex with him, because I know I'm a freaking 15 out of 10, he's going mm-hmm. to, you know, like me more. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He's going to want to be with me more. Mm-hmm. Um, and exactly the same thing with the pictures. As soon as he's done coming, that's it. Right? Attention's over. See ya. You know, not going to text you. Mm-hmm. And 
So you feel empty inside. And we talk about this all the time. I mean, that's part of the reason I don't like casual hook- hookups is for that exact reason. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's basically what happened. But it's like how often, and I think, you know, every person deals with this when you're trying to change, it's hard. And it's like, how many times do I have to make the same mistakes before it really sinks in? Well, listen, Rhea, and this is something you have to recognize and not to bring, bring up God, but this is like one of my favorite quotes ever. If you ask for patience, God will give you a line at the bank, okay? So you had made a decision not to have casual sex. So you were then put in the position where you got to choose whether in with your actions that was actually true. Yeah. Okay? And you chose poorly. Yes. But it will bring you more... Obviously, this conversation, which is amazing, and also more wisdom yeah. because the awareness will come. Okay, so next time you might be saying, "Oh, this is this is the exact thing that I asked for. This is the position I asked to be put in by making this decision, and now I can choose better." Yeah, and you know, I don't. I do want to, and this is an important part, right? I don't want to just focus on the L's, okay? Um, because. What's that? The losses. Oh! (laughs) I'm such a loser. (laughs) I don't want it. Like, it's easy for me to be like, oh, my God, I can't believe I did that. I went against my boundaries. But there's actually been a ton of wins as well. Um, I have, in the past month, have laid down my boundaries in other circumstances. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's been really, really positive. And any time – and I've been nervous, right? Like, guys have hit me up, for instance, and been like, you know, do you want to do this? And I have had to be like, you know what? This guy is a time waster. I am not going to let him do it again. Mm -hmm. And I had – you cut him out. So there have been situations where I have been able to stand up. But like I said, sometimes people catch you on that one day and it's just a tricky situation. Well, that's why awareness is so important, Rhea, because you have to be able to step back and say, I am aware that this is the exact position that I put myself in in order to grow. Yeah. And do I want to grow today? And maybe you don't. And maybe you just want to go and get fucked and just be reminded that one more time. Oh, yeah, this makes me feel like shit. But there's also, and this goes back to relationships and dating, there is a hope in there, okay? And this... uh, uh, for men and women, this will get you into bad habits and bad cycles, is you hope that they like you and that yeah. they want to be with you. Yeah. Okay? And you really, you never really know until it's happening if you guys like each other. And it oftentimes just catches you both off guard. But you kind of have to put yourself in those positions to find out. Yeah. Okay? So you are doing the right thing. You are on the right path. You are killing it. And just sitting here and having this conversation openly and admitting this stuff to yourself, to all of us, to me, um, really makes a difference in your awareness. Yeah. So whether you do it again or not, it's fine. You're going to learn either way and you're going to figure out exactly what's right for you navigating forward. Yeah, it, absolutely. And I have been taking our advice and and I think the old me would have been – there's a lot more situations where the old me would have just maybe not messaged the person back at all, like kind of more of a ghosted situation if I didn't like them. And lately what I've been trying to do is be more communicative. Mm-hmm. Even when I don't want to speak to someone, I try and tell them why mm. um, as a new pra- – and it, this is all practice, right? Mm-hmm. Like practicing is also failing and trying again. So mm-hmm. um, I'm always trying to practice. And then lately when I have been really clear and direct, like we always – Uh, promote in all of our podcasts. Um, It's felt very hard at the moment, but it's always been a success. Yeah. It's been, um, so I would definitely recommend that um, to other people to just say like, listen, um, I'm sorry. Uh, For example, like if a guy hit me up, I'm sorry, you've wasted my time in the past. Um, I can't do this anymore. It's not good for my life right now. Good luck out there. That's my favorite Good luck. I always, whenever I'm sending a a bad message, you you'll know because it'll say "Good luck!" exclamation mark. Oh my god. (laughs) Well, we also have to remember that. (laughs) So if you've gotten that message from me, uh, you're just not good. (laughs) Well, she means it. I mean it though. Yes. As as bitchy as that sounds, she does mean good luck out there. Um, One thing that you have to remember is like. It's hard to let go of people, even if you just had a little crush. Yeah. Or for me, you know, I, you know, like if you're seeing somebody and you had to break it off, like 
it's hard to let go of that person. You get attention from them. You liked them. You wanted them in your life. You enjoyed them. Yeah. Um, but it's harder, I think, to um, live with yourself if you're um, fucking yourself over. Okay, if you're making yourself putting yourself in positions where you feel empty inside. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I think we get really wrapped up in this feeling, Rhea says this all the time, that life always has to feel really good. And as much as it's the right thing to do is to let go of people that um, aren't um, treating you well or aren't aligning with your life goals, it's very hard. Just like um, the answer is easy, but the actual practice is hard. It's not going to be easy. It's going to sh- feel like shit. You might cry and you might hold on to it for months or years, um, but you need to remember that you made that decision for a very good reason and always go back to that. Rhea likes to rationalize that she didn't make the decision for a good reason and then she likes to go back to the guy. <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, that's a really good point because I felt that way. Like, I get sad about it, right? Like, I was even sad for, like, 10 hours the other day. It was, mm-hmm. like, you know, because I – a long time. It is a long time. But at the same time, I did exactly what you just said. I just had to remind myself, you know, life isn't easy. Um, when you develop a crush on someone and you realize that they don't feel the same way about you, it's going to sting a little bit, you yeah. know what I mean? And that's okay, right? Yeah. But you have to um, just, like, acknowledge the feelings and really just move the fuck on. Yeah. Well, I also wonder – I want to get um, your opinion on this, Rhea, and also your opinion, listener. It's kind of like a catch-22, right? So you went on a few dates with this guy. You start. You gave him your time. You like did stuff that you don't usually do, which is like go outside, go in nature, um, get to know somebody, have long talks. Um, you know, even maybe drink some wine. You're very. Uh, you don't drink a lot of alcohol. You're very strict with that. Um, so you did all these things, and it was kind of like in hopes of you know aligning your boundaries with your your new boundaries with your decisions and your life. Um, And then once you finally did feel comfortable to have sex with him, now it seems like he's kind of fallen. I'm guessing, but it sounds like he's kind of fallen off. He's not answering your messages. He's not as inclined to go on these um, dates with you. Um, So it's like, why don't you just fuck him on the first day, right? Yeah, it's bizarre. So I get it. I totally get it. Um, And it's like, what? So just so that you could say he was wrong and you were right? I don't know. Like, this is one of the mysteries of dating that – um, ends up being very confusing to me. Yeah. Um, because was that a waste of your time? I don't yeah. know. I mean, I, I also have a, a level of intensity. Um, Wait, is this another excuse? <laughs> it could be another excuse. No. Well, I'm just saying that here's the thing. Like, I don't know. Maybe this is an excuse. But seriously, do some people have different sex drives than others? Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. That was going to be my next question. So, like, you think this guy's fallen off, but, like, did you guys have sex yesterday and he still hasn't texted you? Is that – because, like, he might – No. No? It was a while ago? No, we haven't had sex. Oh. I thought you said – No, no. I haven't had sex with the second crush. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. The second crush I haven't had – so that's very weird. Oh, okay. So that's good. That's good. So he's still in the running. Maybe he's still in the running. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a possibility? Maybe he still wants to have sex with me. Like, for me, I'm like, wh- wh- why does he want to have sex with me right now, right? The second. Mm, well, they're, I mean. But, they're, I mean, you know, that's the thing. People don't have the sex drive. They're not, they're busy with their lives, this, that. Not everyone's as intense as me. Yeah. And, I mean, we talk about um, not having a guy on the podcast, but I think this would be an, a good time to have a guy who dates a lot in the room. Yeah. Because, and please, if you're listening, message us and let us know what is your side of this and you know just your own specific side you don't have to speak for all guys um you know if you take a girl on three dates and she still hasn't had sex with you do you keep trying is that the point where you stop Uh, 
This has never cheap. happened to me before, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been – I've never gone on a date with a guy and not had sex with them. Yeah, Like, right? I just never ha- – this is – I'm in new territory right okay, now. Okay, okay. So I was sort of confused. I thought you had said that the new the new guy you have a crush on that you fucked him and then he hasn't texted no, you. No, I haven't had that sex with them yet. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay, so, so she's it's good. We're maybe positive. she's either putting off the empty feeling inside <laughs> or she's building a relationship. We don't know. <laughs> And that's the kind of the mystery, right? <laughs> and that's kind of why you have to have that hope that I was talking about before. You have to just hope for the best and you have to still get out there. Yeah, you know what the hope the the hope for me, the mantra or whatever that I go back to is that, you know, stay true to yourself um, and then the good will come to you, right? Mm-hmm. Um, instead of like reaching out into the world for things. So mm-hmm. that's what I'm trying to remember. Mm-hmm. Um I'm hoping for like like for instance my exa- like what I'm trying to say is like if someone doesn't like you and we've said this a billion times that's okay it's actually like good yeah like if someone doesn't want to have sex with you and is like doesn't want to date with you anymore that's great they're giving you a message and they're not right for you yeah so you don't want them yeah if somebody so, doesn't like you then they are really not right for you but it's your e- <laughs> it's it's your ego that pipes up and is like, oh, well, I'm feeling moody now because this person doesn't like me. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's how I feel. Right? Yeah. I'm like, well, and I think it's a good perspective to have um, because then you can actively change it. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, oh, I'm moody because of this. Okay. Well, why don't I just say, wow, thank God I learned this sooner than later before you know, I made a life with this person and then realized that they didn't like me or they didn't want the same things with me. Yeah. Because that, that could easily be done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, I wanted this podcast to be about the next step. So like when you become exclusive with somebody. But, you know, it's been so long since Rhea and I have even done that, that we don't even know if we can speak on that. Like now, and, and now that I develop <laughs> crushes again, I'm like racking my brain. I'm like, what did I do in the past to get a boyfriend? Yes. I'm like, what? How did I get a boyfriend? Because I had, I've had boyfriends. Me too. Right? I swear. And I'm like, what the hell? What was I doing that I got that? Um, but you know, a lot of it, it, it's not like there's no one person. There's no soulmate. Um, but I think a lot of love, like when you're really developing a, a relationship with someone in that way, it, there's a timing factor. Mm-hmm. Would you agree? Oh, yeah. Um, it's like you got to meet at the right time, I feel like, for it to um, work out. Um, but a lot of the times, I feel like I just bullied guys into being my boyfriend. I swear to fucking God. I think in my <laughs> mind... Well, that takes a lot of confidence. I don't want to <laughs> say bully. I think bully might be a strong word, but like I remember... The times that I've had the longest relationships, I remember thinking, like, hooking up with a guy and then thinking in my head, I want this guy to be my boyfriend and then, like, just manifesting it. Okay. Um, so that's how I think I did it in the past. And I would just be <laughs> – and then I was just like, are you going to be my boyfriend? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, well, there you go. But I don't know. Maybe that was very immature, right? Like, maybe I'm a real adult now and I don't know. Um. <laughs> I mean, it's good to be direct. Obviously, we – preach that all the time. I think one thing that you said, um, the timing has to be right for it to work out. And I think we need to really evaluate what we mean by it working out. Yeah. Okay. Because there, uh, I see, um, I, I bring it up a lot cause I learned so much from it. I had a very successful short term relationship. Okay. Whether it's three months, five months, some people were just horrible to me. Okay. And those were not successful any length of relationship. Um, But I think that you can start looking at short-term relationships as things working out. Yeah. Okay? Unless your goal is to actually be married to someone for 60 fucking years, then yeah, I guess those other things don't work out. But there's another person in that relationship, and you don't know if it's death till you part until the other person dies. Okay? So you're never going to know for real if that person is going to be with you forever and ever until it's over. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Okay? Um, Dan Savage is always saying this. So let's reevaluate how we see or how we define things working out. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, that sucks if someone, you know, right away doesn't want to be with you. Um, That didn't work out in any way. Okay? But if you, you know, sleep together for a few months and you treat each other really well um, and then you part ways, that's great. Yeah, totally. that wor- that's working out. Yeah, or you know, I met somebody 
Um, he's in the movie industry and I don't know, the timing t- in my opinion was perfect because we aligned at the exact same time where I was working. He was staying because it was a hotel and it worked out beautifully. And only, he was only staying there for five weeks and maybe I could have lamented the fact that, oh, if only, if only, but it's like, that worked out really well. Yeah. We had a freaking blast. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the way you look at timing, the way you look at defining the word working out, I think is really important as well because um, your perspective, when you know, you know, this is what people mean by saying perspective is everything. It's how you uh, choose to have an attitude towards things. Is it going to be positive or negative um, or somewhere in between? Yeah, I mean, I guess when I really think about it in those terms, I'm not really looking for, like, a long-term boyfriend specifically. I'm just looking, just, I'm just <laughs> All looking. All I want. <laughs> is I just want a guy, whether it's long-term, short-term, whatever, that wants to connect with me on a deeper level. Yeah. That's it. It could be for three months or a year or longer. Yeah. But I just literally, I Probably I, no shorter than three months, though. Yeah. I like three months. Like, that's hot. Yeah. Yeah. You can, like, get to know somebody, like, pretty well. And so I guess I just really, like, I just don't want a sexual-based relationship. Yeah. Um, And I think the guys that I've met, whether it's because I have a sex podcast or um, however they see me, they're like, okay, well, like, what can I get out of you? Exactly. Right? Oh, well, well, me me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And And you just have to recognize that and say, oh, actually, nothing. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah bye um okay we have a question um we have bless an ask Rose a- your heart because I love yes, these questions and Rhea didn't tell me until a few minutes ago that we have a question so it's so freaking exciting um uh, is gonna read the question and then we'll answer it yeah so um if you go to our website rosaandrea.com I've added a tab called ask Rosa where you can ask Rosa questions and um one of our fans uh, has sent in a question, and it's fantastic. And, and he's actually a great fan, so thank you for yes, listening, thank fan. you for You're listening. Yes, and and we really – this is a very good question because I think um, – Well, now she's already answering it. Just read the goddamn question. <laughs> I, know, I, love, I love this question. Okay. She loves this question. <laughs> okay, so – It's a bit long, you guys. Bear with me. Hey, Rosa, how are you? Hope you're doing great on this gloomy, rainy day. Anyway, Zuh, I have just been seeing this lady who I'm not sure is reciprocating. I I met her on Tinder. More specifically, um, I read her profile. We didn't match. I saw that she had Snapchat, added her there anyways, and we chatted. We met a few times now um, in the last two weeks, and it's been really great. At the end of the night, though, anytime we're not together and go back to texting, um, there's a lot. Um, there's not a lot of communication. I try and keep the conversation going, but I just get a few word answers or no reply at all. I've tried messaging her all throughout the day and sometimes get no response. I've even tried calling sometimes, and she doesn't pick up. I don't expect anything, and I'm not demanding her to reply. She has opened up to me about past relationships and how she just has just broken up with someone over two months ago who was demanding of her time, and I don't want to be demanding of her time or get off on the wrong foot. Um, also, she works at night, so I can understand that she wants to rest. She's going away for Christmas, so I have a week to figure this out. I honestly think I have to ask her where we stand. Am I jumping in too fast? Should I wait for her to come back and leave it for now? Any advice would be definitely appreciated. Thanks, Rosa. (laughs) So thanks again for that great um, message. Yeah, and um, I have a lot of positive things to say about this, and I think you'll agree, Rhea. She has gone out with you a few times, okay? So she likes being around you. If she didn't like you, she wouldn't go out with you again, okay? It doesn't sound like she likes the way that you communicate afterwards. And for me personally, uh, when I go on a date with somebody, I actually like the time um, afterwards to just enjoy the conversation, remember it, play it back in my mind. I don't need to continue to text or continue to communicate after the date is over, especially the first day. Um... Usually I'll send a little message like, that was so awesome. Thanks again for paying the bill. 
Um, would love to see you again, something like that, very short. But I don't say like, oh, how's the rest of your day going or anything of those of that nature. Um, it actually takes your brain like a long time to process conversations. Um, you'll rem- you'll notice uh, if you do give yourself the time, you remember little things that she said or that you said over throughout the day. And that's actually kind of a joy of dating is that you get to experience that. So I think that's a really positive um, thing. It's also positive that you said that she opened up to you. And she may have either done that because she trusts you or she feels comfortable with you or because it's a little hint. She uh, she told you that her ex-boyfriend was a little bit um, too, too, demanding. too demanding, too much of her time. So that might be a bit of a hint to say you need to back off. And it's too bad she's not being more direct with you, but I think that it is pretty direct when she doesn't respond or answer your calls. And I, I mean, Rhea can now go on a rant about what it means if you call someone. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't think you should call people on the phone, okay? Um, especially when you're at the beginning stages of dating um, like this, um, when you've only dated a few times. I literally have a, a heart attack when someone calls me on the phone. I'm thinking, did someone just die? Yeah. Or is the bank calling me to tell me all my money is gone? Mm-hmm. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> my nightmares. So yeah. I think that's too much. And especially um, if you're already texting, you really, you know, not everyone is going to be so direct as me and Rosa, okay? Mm-hmm. Some people... Um, you have to look for the little hints. That's right. You might have to read between the lines. And she's already, like Rosa said, given you a couple hints. Um, and if she's only giving you one word answers to your texts and eight, maybe even not even replying sometimes, that is not the time to be calling on the phone. Right. That's right. Um, you do not want to be calling. No. Um, so give it some time. Give some time, especially if you're already hanging out in real life. You don't need to be texting all the time. A little text after the date saying, I had a great time. Let's chat next week. Maybe we can hook up then. Um, that's the kind of thing I think that works a lot uh, better, especially if you, if you say, I actually like what I just said. If you're a guy and you say, hey, um, I love that date uh, that we went on just now. This is what I enjoyed about it. Let's chat next week or let's chat on this day. That kind of gives the girl something to look forward to. And yeah. she doesn't need to be annoyed now when you're you know, texting um, because it can be very um, over, a feeling of overbearing. And if you take it too far with the texting and the person's not receptive, it can really push you too far away from each other. Yeah. So I need you to keep these things in mind. She's agreed to see you more than once. So she likes you. Okay. She feels comfortable enough to open up to you about her past relationships. Um, So that's a really good sign as well. Uh, She's told you her plans for Christmas. I think being in a new relationship uh, during the holidays is a little bit tricky. You have to give people leeway to um, do what they got to do because people get all panicky. They have all these crazy plans. They're traveling, uh, what have you. I think that um, you don't need to have a serious conversation with her uh, about where you stand whatsoever. Um, I think that you should keep things upbeat and concise if you are texting and leave a few days in between. So uh, I, and I tell this to Rhea because actually sometimes she needs coaching on this. It's the same as in real life. You say something to somebody and you ask them a question or you prompt them to respond and then they answer and they then ask you a question or prompt you to respond. If you're not getting those prompts to respond, the conversation is over. If you say, hey, how was your day? And she says, good and doesn't say how is yours, then she doesn't want to talk right now, or she can't. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's a very good point, Rosa. So that's another little hint. So just like leave it for in person, because she likes hanging out with you in person. She's done it more than once. Uh, There's a week until she leaves. Maybe send her one message just being like, um, how is Christmas shopping going? You know, just something very generic, like... whatever if see if uh things pick back up if they don't leave it and then on christmas day say merry christmas with a freaking santa claus emoji yeah that's it that's it and then when she gets back get january 3rd or, or i guess new year's is a big thing too say happy new year i don't know but 
if not January 3rd, be like, how were your holidays? I would love to meet up and catch up how, like, and see how you're doing. Yeah. And if she says yes, then say, okay, I have the perfect date plan for us. We're going to this place at this time. Are you free? And then if she is interested in hanging out with you again, she will say so. You know, that's all you can do. So it, it, you can pull, reel it in, and this is salvageable. Um, if th- she then says she doesn't want to hang out with you, that's okay. In the going forward in the future, if, you, if there is a woman that you're dating, you need to enjoy the moments that you spend with her in person and then just reel it in when you're not together. You do not yeah. need to be continuing any conversation once you've, the date's over. You don't need that's, to talk. No. Con- like, that's for best friends. That's for family. That's for group chats. If you're starting to date somebody, there's no continuing the conversation once, you're, once it's over. There's no, like, yeah. good nights here and there. No. Just... Let her live her life. Let her think about you just like you're thinking about her. Let her build that fantasy in her mind about yeah, exactly. what she wants to do with you next. Okay? So it turns out our answer is much longer than your question. But I think that we have given you some really good tips on moving forward. Um, and, of course, keep that good perspective. If she if she does uh, say to you, you know, I don't think I want to see you again, that's amazing. Because now you don't have to worry about her ever again. Okay? You've been angsting. You've been wondering what you should do. If she tells you that she doesn't want to hang out with you anymore, that's fine. Now you can go worry about the next girl. But reel it the fuck in. Yeah, you have to be a bit patient in this situation. I think um, that would be really important. And I do have one thing to say. Yeah, patience is good. I do have one thing to say about phone calls. I like phone calls. Some people, it's everyone's different. Yeah. And so you have to be... I'm. I, if a guy texted me and I didn't respond and then he called me, that's like a full on deal breaker. Yes. That's really fucking psycho and I'm not okay with it. Okay. Just to be clear, like that is no good for me because excuse moi. Yeah. You don't think that I saw your message, bro? Yeah. Like I will get to you. Yeah. Because I respect you and I want to communicate with you, but I have not had a chance yet. Yeah, exactly. Okay. If um, I was away, say on va- Christmas vacation, and I a guy called me because I hadn't we had gone on three or four dates and I hadn't seen him, I think that's really nice. Yeah, yeah. That's and true. I like talking on the phone with guys. It does make me a little uncomfortable uh, because it's so unusual these days. But I think it's really nice, and I totally support it. And the reason why I like it, it's because it goes back to the, what we were talking about in the beginning of this episode, the DFK, the deep French kissing. I used to DFK with dudes and talk on the phone with them for four hours a night. Yeah. I, and it reminds me of being obsessed with guys, which yeah. I like. Yeah, you know, you're right. It's old school. It's old school but, and it has sentimental value. Yeah, no, you're. I agree with you on that. But it. I think <laughs> if you're calling someone and they haven't responded to your text. No, no, no. That's no. One of the reasons I like this question so much is because I have experienced guys that have been super communicative um, and they've been super nice guys, but because of the way that they were communicating so excessively to me via text and on my social media and stuff, it, it, it put me off them. And even though they were really nice guys... It was just they needed to take our advice, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so it's really important to look at how everyone's different. Like like I said earlier in our podcast, like, yeah, I might be more of a – I'm a little bit more of a Terry texter maybe than some people. Like I do enjoy a little bit more communication. But you also – yeah, you enjoy receiving it, but you know – like you know how to read the signs. Yes. Okay. So, um, you know, don't, guys, don't use this as an excuse like, oh, well, Rhea, you said you like getting texted every day, so I'm going to text you every day. No, that yeah. is not what she means at all. Exactly. Um, but it's good to acknowledge how you like to communicate. And then you can even say to the person, you know, like, yeah, you know, sorry about that. Like, I'm just a really texty person. I'm going to just not do it so much anymore. Totally. That's good advice. Um, so, yeah, uh, we didn't touch on really anything to do with... <laughs> More serious relationships. We don't know how to get into one. I think that I, I need more experience. Yeah, this is where we stop. This is where <laughs> our, it goes, okay? So we'll <laughs> let you know how, if anything, progresses. Oh. Um, honestly, I'm just in a place where I'm just like, I'm treating people really well. I'm treating myself really well. Um, and I'm focusing on my whole life, uh, my well-being. And I think that 
you know, good people are going to come out of that and uh, good experiences and a lot of wisdom and a lot of learning. And I'm going to share it all with you. Yeah. We're going to tell you everything. I really <laughs> hope that um, I have some good learning experiences coming up. I'll be oh, be careful what you wish for, Rhea. That is a <laughs> fuck, dude. <laughs> next week so I did it again (laughs) okay so what am I going to say what is my what am I going to that's it no more pictures like do I have to reconfirm this with myself um it's tough I'm really have to well what I would do Raya is just wait for 10 minutes to respond as soon as somebody sends you just all you have to do is have the awareness if someone says can I have pics and you're getting into a sexy conversation just close the the messaging app, open up your timer and put a timer for 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay. And you think about what you've done (laughs) for those 10 minutes. I'm just kidding. And no, but for those 10 minutes, just do something else. Don't think about it. And then see how you feel in 10 minutes. Okay. I say the same thing to people who are trying to quit smoking. Okay. Or have anxiety. Well, yes, you feel a certain way right now, but I think that what it sounds like for you is that you do things very like quickly. Um, what's that word? Um, erratically? No, not erratically, <laughs> but um, you um, know, impulsively. Impulsively, So yes. whereas you're, you do things very impulsively and uh, you can't be impulsive when you take 10 minutes to think about something. That's true. Okay. It's the same thing with Amazon for me. I like, I want to buy this, this five pound block of chocolate. I think my sister would like it. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to wait 10 minutes. I'm going to see if I still want that. Yeah. I don't want it yeah, anymore. Exactly. Okay, it's ridiculous. It's yeah. ten dollars shipping. <laughs> uh, I do the same thing with tattoos. That's why I've never gotten one. <laughs> you thought about it for ten minutes. No, I think about it for a year. Oh, I say okay. I really want this tattoo. If I want it in a year, yeah. then I'll get it. Yeah, and, and I write it down, do. and I'm like, bah, good one, Rosa. <laughs> right? Yeah. So the like. Um, I, I, a tattoo lasts forever, so I think about it for a year. I, I mean, I guess a naked picture lasts forever too. I mean, but it's very impulsive. And so I th- what I think you should do is just do the equivalent of walking away from that cashmere blouse in the store. Uh, is yeah, just wait 10 minutes. Advice. Or text me because I will fucking give you a piece of my mind. Yeah, I'm going to try that. And all of you, if you are feeling impulsive and like you might make a bad decision, you should text me. And by text, I mean DM me or email me, uh, and I'll let you know what, what you should do about that, okay? we I have your back. I'll yeah. support you. I'll give you some really good advice. Um, so please hit me up. Yeah, and thank you so much to our fan, our loyal fan, for sending in that question. It was amazing. Um, I think we all learned something from the answer to that. I'm going to replay this over and over and over again <laughs> for myself. Um, so if you have any more questions, you can go to Rosa and Rhea.com, click on ask Rosa, you can fill it out there, or you can just reach out to us directly, hit us up on Instagram at Rosa and Rhea, uh, send us a direct message there, um, and go to our YouTube channel, subscribe to our YouTube, YouTube channel, Rosa and Rhea, and, um, like and comment on our videos. Yes, please. And we're on the um, podcast app as oh, well yeah, now. I so didn't even remember that. Subscribe and give us five old stars. And if you send me a screenshot of your five star review, I will send you a nude. <laughs> oh <my laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I won't do that. Um, um, but I'm really, really, really happy. Um, and yeah, all the questions. So thank you so much for listening. And we love you.